Bitcoin's surge in recent weeks has started a hot debate on Wall Street. Will the world's largest digital currency one day rival gold? Joining us now from London to explain is Bloomberg's precious metals reporter, Eddie Spence. Eddie, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks for taking the time and joining us on Quick Take. Why would anyone compare Bitcoin to gold? Well, the comparison basically gets drawn because of the way that both gold and Bitcoin are supplied. Gold, as we know, has a very low and predictable supply. You know, it takes a lot of time and energy to dig even a tiny amount of gold out of the ground. So the supply each year is very small. Bitcoin takes that to an even greater extreme. The amount of Bitcoin mined every year is always decreasing. And because of the way that it was designed originally, it's also always, uh, we, we know exactly what the supply is going to be in the future. The upshot of that is, well, when you're an investor um, and you want to find an asset that is good for what we would call an inflationary moment, you want something that has a very low, small fixed supply because essentially when there's more money chasing after more assets, the price has to rise. You know, it's just supply and demand. Okay, um, so, it's, so, so it's, sort of, it's, it's sort of the basic concept, as you mentioned, of supply and demand. What does it mean that we're in an inflationary moment right now and, and, and why that would be good for typically for gold, but we're not seeing that play out? Well, we aren't definitely in an inflationary moment yet. If you look at, for example, the US CPI, it hasn't really risen that much. Um, really, we had kind of bigger flashes of that in August when gold um, rose to its, its all-time record high price, uh, in nominal terms at least. There is a suspicion, though, that once this vaccine starts to come through um, and people get vaccinated, the huge amounts of cash that people have saved over the course of this pandemic, you know, from not spending, as well as all the stimulus that's come through, you know, stimulus checks in America, various different other things here in the UK and Europe, basically people are going to start spending a lot more money and they're going to have a huge appetite to spend. That's going to push up prices and also it's going to push up assets that have a fixed supply, like, for example, Bitcoin and gold, but also other ones like um, real estate would be a big one, uh, copper, for example. Just just these kind of assets that you you always need and they have a kind of constrained supply. And once there is like so much money out there chasing after them, you know, the price can only really go up. Okay, so one thing that has happened this week, Eddie, is a new all-time high for, for Bitcoin. It happened yesterday morning. It took more than three years uh, to get there. And we actually even saw it go higher to an intraday record of $19,914. And, and 33 cents. It has sharply retreated uh, since then. I'm wondering, though, about what makes 2020 and the Bitcoin rally that we've seen this year higher by more than 170 percent just this year, different from from back in 2017. It's something that you dive into in your article. And, and why are people treating it differently this year than they were three years ago? Well, the first thing to say is that not everyone is treating it differently yet. There's still plenty of skeptics out there. And Many of the enthusiasts are the same enthusiasts we had in 2017. What there is distinctly this time around is more institutional money involved. Hedge funds, family offices, um, high net worth individuals. Basically, this is you know what we would call kind of serious cash that's flowing into, into Bitcoin. Now, if that cash is sticky and it's there to stay, then it could have really big implications for the price of Bitcoin because Frankly, you know, it's it's got a big market cap, but just not compared to all the institutional money that exists in the world at this point. If you compare it to gold, for example, you know, there is there's trillions of dollars worth of money held up in gold right now. If there was even a small shift from that money into Bitcoin, the, the price of Bitcoin would go crazy. It's just a case of whether that's about to happen. Now we've seen um, JP Morgan of started to say that it could be happening if you start looking at um, flows into Bitcoin-related ETFs that bid by institutional investors. That marker appears to be there. And now you're also um, seeing a few big institutional names like uh, Guggenheim, uh, Stanley Guggenheim, um, you know, saying that essentially that they're, at the very least they're interested. Um, that's why people are treating this one differently. Bloomberg's Eddie Spence live for us in London. Thanks, Eddie, for your time today. It's good to see you. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.